Hey, it's Coach with Tactical Hive. We're out on the range today, and today we're gonna go over malfunction drills with the AR platform rifle. The way I do them, the way I teach them, and they're good for about 99% of all correctable malfunctions. Right after this. This video is brought to you by Vetter Holsters. They're a good American company, quality stuff at a decent price. So if you're looking for a good holster, which you should be, check out in the description below. All right, guys, so the way we teach malfunctions is not by giving them a fancy name, okay? You're gonna react to what the gun tells you. So if you get a click instead of a bang, that's gonna initiate your immediate action drill. This is the same with a pistol, but the technique is slightly different. It looks something like this. Punched out, ready to go. I'm gonna take my shot. Get a click instead of a bang. So my finger comes off the trigger, tap, move my face, rack it, get back on, take my follow-up shot. Okay, some of the things to notice there. I didn't address my safety because on the AR platform, there's no reason. When the hammer go, goes forward, that's that click that you just heard, that tells you that when the hammer's forward, the gun ain't gonna fire, okay? You can't physically put it on safe either. So you're just wasting time. So the tap is to make sure that you didn't bump this and the magazine's not quite seated, right? So if you bump your, uh, your mag release, which happens, but the magazine doesn't come all the way out, you'll get that first shot and then you'll get a click. So that tap, just make sure we're good to go. Now, some guys will tell you to break it off your shoulder and, and you know do all this. There's no, not a lot of recoil here. I'm not worried about losing control over this gun when I tap. Now, I just have to move my face out of the way just a little bit. I'm still looking down range. I'm not looking off to the side. I don't break my stance. Everything stays the same. It's just the tap and I get here, I'm just gonna, like I'm hooking, you wanna hook, the charging handle, don't pinch it, just hook it and like throw it over your shoulder. When that happens, then this will all work the way it's supposed to. If you try and guide it, you're gonna cause another malfunction. Go, off safe, take my shot. Got my two shots. Up, oh, third one was a click. Finger out. This is important, because you don't wanna just throw a round out that you don't mean to. But everything stays the same. This hand just comes off here, tap, roll my face off, give it that hook, back on, and I'm back to work, okay? So uh, that's your immediate action drill. It's cued by that click instead of a bang, all right? So the next one is your remedial action. That is indicated when you get a dead trigger or if you're switched on and you're actually feeling that bolt cycle, it feels different if it comes back and goes forward or just locks to the rear. Okay, now during a malfunction, it probably won't be all the way locked to the rear, but it'll be, it have an issue there, right? So you're gonna get that dead trigger. So the two things that can cause that are an empty, empty gun or a malfunction gun. Okay, so, if you, you, you have to decide that fairly quickly. So what we're gonna do is when you get that dead trigger or you feel it locked, it, it felt weird, you finger out, attempt to safe, and then you're gonna roll over and take a look and see what you got. This is a cue here, right? If you see brass hanging out of there or brass in any, any way, then that's gonna key your malfunction drill. If you just see an empty chamber with the bolt locked to the rear, you're just gonna reload, right? So, Come here, I'm out. Okay, I got a dead trigger on that one. So, finger out, attempt to safe. It went on safe. I'm gonna roll over and I see brass in here, right? So I see the brass, I immediately bring this into my workspace. Lock that bolt to the rear. The magazine comes out and I'm gonna roll over and check and see what I got. While I'm doing that, that's what the dump pouch is for. You drop that in your dump pouch. I see everything's clear. If it wasn't clear, then I send it, lock it to the rear again. Give that, that 
extractor claw. Another chance to grab onto that rim and pull it out. And I'm gonna reach up here, grab a new magazine, shove it in, send it back out, back to work, okay? So if it's empty, you're gonna roll over, see that it's empty, change mags. That's an easy combat reload, okay? If you're not, you see that brass, and what we use, we use, uh, if you've got access to some AK-47 blanks, they work really good to mimic that issue, right? Normally though, what happens is it's a failure to extract. So the bolt's gonna get, the extractor skips over that rim and leaves the brass all the way up in the chamber. So you, you want, you're probably gonna have to send that bolt forward and give it another chance. We can't program, uh, you know, ammunition to malfunction at will. So we use that our, our little training artificiality for nine mil. We load 40 cal uh, dummies in there. The best thing we've found so far for the AR is uh, AK-47 blanks. It just works. Something else you might encounter is a double feed. Okay, so instead of the failure to extract, when your bolt goes forward, usually you know, when you get older magazines, sometimes the feed lips open up a little bit and that bolt going forward will strip off two and try to shove two rounds into the chamber at the same time. All right, so in order to, uh, to work that, we got a dummy round here and we'll load it and we'll just cover that with our hand and pull it out here like this and let it go forward again. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. All right, so you can see you've got two rounds trying to get into the same hole there. Okay, so this isn't a malfunction that you can just set up to go in your gear while you're training. You have to actually physically set this up and go through that process if you want to train it. Normally, I just do it for demonstration because when you see this, the fix is pretty much the same, okay, with one small addition. Okay, so I'm going to get up here. I got that dead trigger, finger out on safe, and roll it over and I'm gonna see this. Okay, once I see all that brass and crap hanging out there, that's gonna cue me to do a remedial. Same thing, bring it in my workspace, pin the uh, bolt catch with my thumb, it, we're gonna lock the bolt to the rear and stow the charging handle. What that does, it takes all that spring tension off of the bolt pushing onto those rounds. Then this magazine's gonna come out. It's gonna go into my dump pouch. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna look over and see if everything falls clear. Most of the time it will because it's not really hammered in there. Of course, if you do a couple, tap, couple of tap racks before then, you're gonna hammer them in there really good and you're gonna to have to address that. So you roll over here, let's say they're still in there. I'm gonna take these fingers right here. I'm gonna shove them up, see how they fit right in there? And that, usually you can just tickle those, uh, those rounds and they'll fall right out. Then you're gonna check it, get into your workspace, get your new magazine, load it up, send it, back to work. Okay guys, so this is the technique, right? And I know there's guys out there, well, what? that's gonna take so long, you're gonna get shot at. It's like, yeah, you'll probably be looking for cover at that point, but while you're doing that, you're gonna be doing these techniques, okay? So that's the tactic, this is the technique, okay? If you're in a room and you got a close-in threat, you're gonna to transition to your pistol, right? But if, if you have a choice and a chance, you know, to, between shooting uh, somebody with a rifle and shooting the threat with a pistol, go with a rifle every time, okay? We wanna keep our rifle up and running as much as possible. Anything outside of this. So you get a click instead of a bang, cue's a tap rack and it should be automatic. You get that dead trigger or you feel the bolt lock to the rear, finger out on safe, roll it over, take a look. As soon as you roll it over, I'm just gonna roll here like this. As soon as I move the gun, just in like this, I can look down and I can see into that ejection port and that's gonna tell me what I need to do next. If I see brass or the bolt is forward, it's gonna go straight into a remedial action. Same thing, locking the bolt to the rear, stow it, mag out, and then check, mag in. If there's brass deep in there, you want to send that bolt forward to give that extractor a second chance. If there's brass hanging out, you're going to have to maybe do some little finger surgery there real quick. And then it's just a reload and you're back to work. 
Okay, this is gonna solve most of the problems that you're gonna have with ammunition in, in your gun. If these don't fix it, it's probably not gonna be fixable. So you're gonna be on your secondary or running away, all right? So that's what I got for you today. Immediate action and remedial action. We're describing what we're gonna do when the gun tells us it needs it, okay? You can say type one, type two, type three, all day long. Nobody knows what the hell that means. If, or it's harder for your brain to process that, right? So just understand, click instead of a bang, immediate action. Dead trigger or feeling that bolt lock to the rear, that's gonna cue your remedial action drill. And it's pretty much all the same, all right? So guys, if you like this content, like, subscribe, leave me a comment.